everyone, it's Pippa here with the Complete Newbie's Guide to Warbler. Take two. Today we're going to be doing a fixing tutorial. So I had a massive response from everyone and a lot of requests to do this tutorial. So I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for getting back to me on things, letting me know what you thought of my old tutorial. It was obviously a bit naff, so what we've done is we've upped the production quality on this one um, and I've treated myself to a brand new camera. So you guys can actually see what I'm doing and I can share with you all my knowledge and things that I know and I can actually hopefully help you guys out there and help you with your cosplays because you are all awesome and I hope you know that. Um, if you would like to leave any more feedback on things um, or you would like to see any more of my work if you haven't already, um, also any messages about the tutorial, anything you would like to see in the future, please just drop me a message at my Facebook page, it's in the description below, I'll get back to you all as soon as I can. Um, so I just want to say a massive thank you again and I hope you learned something today and I hope I could share something with you. So thanks a lot and enjoy. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you a few different um, methods of fixing um, using this piece of armor. Um, this one's going to be used for my Lilith cosplay which is coming up soon. Um, so I still need to put the fixing on the back of it. Um, so it's not quite done, it's missing some parts. But um, I'm going to show you basically how you do the strapping and the fixing. Um, I'm going to show you a different selection of materials as well today, as normal. Um, so what we've got is we've got the basic warbler, um, which is generally what I use to attach things with, um, to the warbler armour. Um, we also have a small piece of Wonderflex, um, which is actually really good for... Um, Strap as well because you just get a little bit of extra strength because of the membrane in it. Um, you just get that little bit extra support. It depends whether you want to do it or not. It's up to you. Um, it's complete preference. Um, some people like to use it, but again, it's entirely up to you. Both of them stick to warbler, so it's your choice. Um, another couple of things we're going to be looking at. I'll just show you briefly now. Is um, if you're in doubt of how to attach something to your armour, like with my Fallout uh, shoulder plate, nine times out of ten, super glue. If you're thinking how to make something that's all attached in some sort of crazy way, and how you're going to piece these bits onto here, and maybe you'll have to drill through like I started doing, and all these sort of like, oh, maybe if I make a loop and thing, yeah. Generally, just sticking on with super glue. Um, I used here as well. I just used an old household belt uh, that a friend gave to me that he bought for something else and it didn't fit. Um, so he just gave it to me and I cut it in half and I made a strap out of it. You don't really need any fancy, um, fancy attachings and things a lot of the time. Um, if it's your first time making something, you know, a lot of the time you do just want to make something out of what you've got knocking around and you don't really want to pay a lot for things. So, old household belt and super glue um, is generally the best way forward if you're making something that will suit with that. Um, another couple of things you can use are these. Um, and these are like normal belt clips. Um, I can't think of the name for them, but what I'll do is I'll have a search on the internet um, in a minute and I'll pop that in the description as well um, if you're looking for these specific clips. Um, so I'll put where you can get them from roughly um, around and things and you can have a nosy. Um, but these are just like little clips that you can pop on your armour. Um, what I've done here is we made two little straps that were little loops um, and the armour just clips together. You can attach either side onto your armour and they'll just clip. So these are great for things like um, a bit more sci-fi sort of armour, um, things that you just want to get in and out of fast. Um, these are, these are really good, and they're dead cheap as well to get hold of. Um, some other different strapping things are webbing. Um, now, you do need to burn the end of webbing, so please have an adult or something, some sort of um, parental guidance if you're going to start burning stuff. But otherwise, you get this effect going on, and it frays and tatters. Um, so when you cut the webbing, you just want to burn... Just cut that chop it like that and then you just want to singe that end and it melts it and keeps it all nice and straight. But that's just really good as well if you're doing the sort of belt loop idea 
um, or to doing the buckling idea as well. Um, this stuff's really good. Glue it on and you've got some great straps. It's also really good for um, when you're actually strapping the back of your arm as well. It's just, it's nice and heavy duty. Um, another method of fixing that a lot of people use um, is elastic. Can't go wrong with elastic. Um, if you just glue it, take your piece of armour, glue it on one side, glue it on the other side, you've got a bit that just slips on and off. Um, without any sort of faffing, any sort of like in out bit. A lot of the time though with warbler it does, it can peel off. So you might want to use the technique I'm going to show you in a minute um, of how to actually fix um, things to the warbler. So I'm going to show you how to use, how to make little hooks and stuff inside it. And you might want to loop it over, sew straight down there or glue it or something. And then you've got a nice firm um, elastic which is just going to pull straight onto your leg without any sort of hassle or um, messing around and tying things up and untying them later on. Again, it's entirely true and a lot of the time some things do look better with certain costumes so you might want to use that in like black um, and it'd be quite a clean looking thing. I tend to go for, um, in my hair scene that I did, I went for a um, leather black crisscross strapping because that suited what I was doing in the times of things um, and the area sort of setting and that sort of idea. So it, it honestly, it depends on your personal preference and what you think is going to suit your costume the best. Um, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to fix your armour. So what you're going to need is you need your lovely armour piece that you're going to be working from. And you're going to be needing some of these. Um, now these here are called D-rings. Um, you see on the camera? They're called D-rings. And they are tiny little, basically D-shapes of metal. Um, and they are so useful and so brilliant for fixing stuff and they're really robust, super strong, you're not going to be able to break them unless you're like a tanky person or you've bought some really dodgy ones. Um, but yeah, these are these are super useful. You can get them dirt cheap as well. I bought these 10p each at my local um, bead and craft shop. Um, so if you've got a jewellery making shop near you, you can get them from there. Um, you can buy them on eBay. Um, you can buy them from a lot of online craft stores, uh, and they're really, really cheap. And they normally come in packs of ten. Um, so yeah, you can. These are the best things to use. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take one of these, and then I'm going to be taking a strip of your warbler or your wonderflex. And for this purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to be using warbler. Um, you can do anyway, but sometimes, obviously, I say with the, the wonderflex. Um, it adds a little bit extra strength. Also, I've got a load left over, so um, I just use it because it's cheaper than using my warbler because I love it that much. Um, so you take a piece, just measure out on your D-ring how far it's going to go. So you want it a little bit smaller than your D-ring, otherwise you're going to have a huge overlap at either side and you're not going to be able to get it through your D-ring. So you're just going to cut a nice long piece, so say to about there, you can always make it shorter in a bit. And remember, always, always, always save your offcuts. Um, the best things to do. And you just want to make sure that your D-ring is going to fit nicely in that. Um, and it's going to be nice and nice and small on that one. And it goes through nice and solidly. And it's quite simple, actually, what you do. That. Oh, that's all you need to fix it. Um, now, what you're going to do next is you're either going to take a pair of scissors or a craft knife. Um, I normally tend to use a craft knife, I prefer a craft knife, but firstly I couldn't find mine this morning, um, and also um, because I know a lot of people don't really have craft knives and they're quite dangerous to use and stuff, I'm just going to show you with scissors today um, and what you're doing. But craft knife works in exactly the same way, um, it's just nicer with a flatter blade and a lot easier to do. So you're going to turn your piece over and you're going to work out on the back where you want it to go. So I'm going to be doing three pieces down here. So I'm going to be doing one at the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom of the leg. Um, and it's going to go on either side because what I'm going to do is I'm going to crisscross either my stuff over or I can put black elastic on. I've not decided yet what I'm going to be doing. Um, so yeah, you just choose where you're going to have it. So I'm probably going to have mine about down here, a um, little bit away from the top. Um, 
So yeah, about there's good for me. There's no real exact science to it, just as long as it stays in your leg. You can put as many on or as few on as you want. Just remember, the fewer you put on, the um, the harder it's, yeah, the, the less it's probably going to stay on your leg. So if you're going to put like two on this, for example, um, it'll probably be good with elastic just straight over the thing. But if you're just going to put one on, that's not going to stay on your leg because it's going to wobble everywhere and you're going to get really annoyed with it. Um, so yeah, you tune it to bit. And then you're going to heat this part up first. Um, so you're going to be making a small loop like you would normally with elastic if you were going to thread the elastic through it. You're just going to make a loop over like that with your uh, warbler. So I'm just going to heat that up now with heat gun. you just want it a little bit bendy. Um, do it sticky side up um, so the sticky side sticks together. Um, it just makes it a little bit stronger and make sure the bond doesn't break as much. So you're just going to fold it like so. So you have a little fold on and then you're just going to press it down. If you press too far up you just wiggle that bit and wiggle the loop and it will come nice and clean away from it. Um, and it won't be too much hassle. So you've got that bit, and that's still slightly warm and bendy. Um, and you're just going to put that to one side for now. Next, you're going to take your armour and your heat gun again, and you're going to choose where you want your um, decide where you want it to go. If you want to, you can mark these on in, in pen or something, just so you know where you're going to put them if you're feeling a bit nervous about it. You can mark it on. And you're just going to take your heat gun and heat up the area around. You don't want to heat it too much. If you see my first tutorial, I know it's quite long. Um, I said about there's three different stages of warbler and there's like a bendy phase and then there's like a bubbly phase and stuff. You don't want to heat it up so much that you bend your entire armour piece. You just want to heat it up enough so you get this top layer um, here. And what will happen is it'll go a bit warm, a bit shiny, and then all of a sudden you'll see the air in the foam rise um, and it'll create a bubble. You want to stop at that point. Don't go any further than that. Um, so I'm just going to show you now. And that's all you want. Mine started to go a bit white speckled, as you might be able to see there. Um, and there's a couple of bumps forming in my warbler. Um, I'm not doing it far enough, but it, it, it starts to bubble around because the foam starts to pick up. Um, yeah, I'm just going to heat them up because what you want is you want it to go inside. So mine's just not quite warm enough yet. There you go. And the bubbles have started to create on the surface, as you can see. So you're just going to take your scissors and you're going to just snip. Make an ever so slight snip. And then you're just going to cut a straight line along the side part see that just cut a straight line along and you're going to take your scissors underneath and you're just going to peel it away from the foam it comes away from the foam ever so slightly it doesn't need a lot of pressure and you're just going to wiggle your scissors to create like a small pocket on your armor so you've got like a little pocket thing going on there then you're going to take this you might need to reheat it up again depending on what you want heating it because of the ring and stuff but you just want it a little bit tacky just so it sticks in easier um, you don't want it too I've learned that if you have it too sticky it won't go in and just bends and flops everywhere um, and you're just going to push it into the hole so you're going to push it in until the ring is sort of on line with the little cut you made and then you're just going to push that bit down so you just squish it down and squish the whole thing together until it is nice and fastened. And then you have your little loop there. Be careful because this bit might still be a bit warm from when you heat it. But that's that's it. You just leave it to cool after that and you have a nice strong, it's already a nice firm bond already. Um, so here we have it. Um, this is the other leg from the armor I did. This is one I've done earlier. I'm just grabbing hold of. Um, and this is 
all fixed up. As you can see, it's got some great little uh, fixes all over it. Um, and for this one, I use Wonderflex for my fixings. Used it exactly the same way, um, and just make sure to squish it down. Um, all you have to do with Wonderflex is just make sure you use the non-rough side together, otherwise it doesn't stick very well. Um, another thing to watch out for as well when you're doing the heating process with your armour is remember you have put a lot of love into it and a lot of care. So just make sure you don't get any bubbles um, on the surface and if you do just be careful and smooth them down with your finger. Um, they come out really easily, you just keep an eye on them. Make sure your armour still looks really nice and great because the foam does heat up and uh, brings hot air out of it because obviously it's got air inside the foam. Um, and I'm just going to quickly show you how we can fix this onto your body. So you've got the buckles in place. Now as I say you've got a choice of things. You can either use uh, an elastic and you can strap one buckle to one buckle like so. And then that would go over your leg and fix perfectly onto your leg like that. Um, and you can just slide it on. Um, another way to do it is by using the black webbing. I like to to use um, a really thin black cord generally um, but it doesn't show up very well on camera and also it um, it can be if your arm was quite heavy um, it can weigh you down on your arms and it can cut, on, cut, cut into you a little bit so it's sometimes quite nice to use a little bit of a thicker um, a thicker strap so I'm just going to show you the webbing so again you would do the same thing you would pull through and I like to corset mine in a sort of corseting way so you would bring it across, bring it across again, round the bottom, and then that would, once you have it on, that would just, you could just pull it tight, and you can tie the two ends at the top. Um, so it's just a crisscross pattern that you would do. Um, I'm actually going to put it in the right way. So yeah, you pull it through the bottom where your ankle bit. It's really good to do this with someone else, um, as I've learned um, a few times from not being asked to do it myself. Yeah, you can pull it through and then you have a nice clean armour at the back which you can then tie these two parts, zigzag that one over, tie them at the top um, or at the bottom depending on which you want and then you've got a nice secure armour strap. Um, and that's pretty much it for what you need to do. Um, you can also, well that's another thing I was going to say, um, another one you can also do is you can also, if you don't want to use the D-ring sort of idea of things, um, again you can use super glue, you can use velcro, um, velcro is a really wonderful thing, um, it's really good if you're doing two part pieces of armour that would, not like these, but that would sit together like that, um, so if you're having a piece that would join together at the sides, it's really good to put some velcro just down the seam there, um, and also you can put the strap in inside and pull it together um, but each way it does depend on your armour piece what you're building and your positioning it's mainly just positioning once you've these are super easy to put in it's just figuring out where you need to put them and putting your positioning okay so thank you for watching guys and i really hope you enjoyed that and it was really informative and useful fingers crossed um, if you would like to leave any more requests for videos, please just send me a message over on my Facebook and I'll get back to you as soon as possible or I can, if you need it in the short term, I can answer your questions via Facebook, um, especially if it's like specific builds and things. I can't necessarily do a tutorial on how to build um, specific items, um, but I can do a generalisation one. Um, I'm building a lot of armour at the moment, so if you need anything helping with... Um, any tutorials at all, please just drop me a message. It'll take me five minutes to get one to you and sort it all out. So, really hope you all have a good day. I hope you enjoyed it and good luck in your armour making. Thank you again for watching.